There are many communities, Freedmen's communities around the United States and in North Carolina that use names like Happy Hill, Freedom Hill, Liberty Hill, all associated with emancipation. In um, 1872, folks were already starting to think about their new settlement and what they were going to call it and they obviously wanted to call it Happy Hill something associated with freedom other than Liberia so the early maps would say Liberia or Happy Hill one or the other and eventually evolved to what we have today the community of Happy Hill with Liberia as the main street in that community. Happy Hill is across the creek from Salem College so to cross the creek the men would lay bricks, great big, big bricks across there, the creek. Then one day my mother was coming home from work and she fell in the, one of those bricks overturned and she fell in. Then my father, again, he uh, rounded up the Happy Hill men and they went to the border of Alderman and asked for a bridge to cross. And consequently they gave us a a uh, bridge, you built a bridge, you walk across, but not to drive. People that own property over here, name for those people, like, for instance, uh, Mr. Nathan Mark, he ran a grocery store at the top of uh, the, the hill of uh, Liberia Street and uh, Pitt Street. Uh, the Happy Hill Cemetery as we know it today is probably pretty much intact from its original boundaries. There was some speculation that the apartments, Happy Hill Garden, might have uh, uh, been on top of some of those graves. Uh, Wake Forest University did some soundings out there before they started the uh, uh, destruction of the old apartments that didn't find anything. And a portion, just a small portion of the graveyard was taken by Highway 52 when it came through, and those graves went to uh, Walkertown in Oak Grove Baptist Church. You can find them now in the rear in a wooded section, along with burials from uh, the Bellevue Cemetery in Wartown, where 52 took that entire burial ground, but just a portion of Happy Hill. We kept our neighborhood clean now. Oh, you didn't come, you didn't find no papers on the ground and none of this and none of that that's going on now. You, you didn't find any of that. We had dirt streets, but the dirt streets was clean. There were some, as I've said before, some good houses, and then there were some that were not so good. Some that were painted and some that were unpainted. And there were the tin uh, roofs. Uh, behind some of the houses on Liberia Street, there were outhouses that several houses used. There was a spigot at the end of each one of those where you had to bring water from there to take to your house to use. But the people who used those outhouses were very, very careful in keeping them very clean. I remember going to kindergarten at Bethlehem Center. I met my twin brother and my sister. And uh, the teacher was Miss, uh, they called Miss Wooten. And uh, she taught me my, uh, my first, my first speech I learned when I was growing up with, when I started the kindergarten is Miss Wooten taught it to me and I would say it uh, I'm the first loco in the program. My heart goes pity, pity, pat. Someone turns around. Wonder whose little boy is that? Nathaniel Tucker is my name. Winston is my station. 
Heaven is my resting place, and God is my salvation. Mr. Limited, we had, he was in our church, but he had the first he he had the first part on this on the on Happy Hill. It's called he made it this this yard. We called it Limited Park, and uh, he used to put lights out there. And we used to go up there, and he would let us have he would let us have picnics in his yard. Before we had the swimming pool, all the little boys boys would go down in a there was a swimming hole down up under the trusser. The trusser ran across the top of it, uh, well, real high up over it, and they would go down there and swim. We used to go down to Salem Creek, you go in the creek, you know, my mom used to tell us that. Now, she used to lecture in the morning, saying, now, don't go to the creek, and don't go this place, and don't go up the railroad track, and don't do all those things, you know, and I, I used to tell my mama, I said, when she got to talk, and I said, mama, I said, you beat me before you go to work. Because I knew what I was going to do it. During the early 50s, when uh, the recreation center was built, we were enabled uh, to have more fun, you know, with lots of different uh, activities, different from what we had experienced in our, you know, playtime around home. Uh, there were exciting games from the outside, the tennis court, uh, uh, the bowling alley, and there was a skating rink, and there were the swings that were always full of young children laughing and having fun. And uh, we learned how to do lots of different things, crafts, crafts on the inside, uh, then there were table games in there for us to play too. And Mr. Rupert Bell was the director of the Recreation Center when uh, we were young. No one on Happy Hill that I remember was rich. I had a lot. But, they, but we enjoyed each other. My mother was a hard working lady. She, she, I don't see how she did it. It was hard times, and she was, my mother, she didn't go any further than that. She went in fourth grade, she, she started working at Reynolds when she was nine, and then she, she made her quit when she went back to school, and then she started working back in Reynolds when she was 12. And I remember we had strikes in, in Reynolds in 47, and, my mother was just marching with him, you know, and it was, it was just hard. There was, most of all, there was a lot of love. You know, that word is, the word love is just, it's just, it's used now, you know, you. Love to me has to be felt. You know when somebody dislikes you or somebody likes you. And you probably hear people say that if I was hungry, if I needed a meal, there was no problem. Although the, the economic was not there, the resources for that. You know, I could go to X house, Y house, and Z house. We always, uh, we always uh, like to make that for because we was we was poor. I have to tell you, we was poor. So <laughs> they used to feed us, you know. And I used to call my mama Bandy and call her mama Mama, you know. And it was, it was but it, you know what I mean? I think a lot of times that. Hard time, make better kids, you know, because you, know, you do it out, you, know, you learn how to share, and uh, I think I did all right in life, you know. <laughs> if I did not have food in my house, there were apple trees in the neighborhood, there were pear trees in the neighborhood, there were peach trees, grapes, pecans, walnuts, locusts, so you could actually leave home on a summer day as a kid and live off the, off the, off the land, you know. We, we, we took it as being poor, but now I think we, we were, were more healthier then than we are now. After uh, Happy Hill Gardens became a part of the Happy Hill neighborhood, uh, that came as early as the early 50s. And that, of course, made a big change in the complexion of the whole area. Many people were, uh, were displaced. Some of them moved to 
apartments in Happier Garden, and they were really happy to because what they found was uh, a lot different from what they already had. Moving from from a area that they into a project today is called now. When you moved in the house, I can basically remember me, <clears throat> moving from a street last was called uh, Mint Street. It was Pine Street, and they changed to Mint Street in 1953, and moved to a house with a refrigerator. And uh, not knowing, not having a refrigerator, oh, remember opening the door and seeing ice cubes. You know, and, and you got a switch to turn your lights on. You got radiators on the wall to keep your house warm. So now, I don't have to cut wood, I don't have to bring coal in anymore. But the path is still clear where everybody used to walk that way to go to the Moravian Church. Rising Ebenezer uh, is one of the few churches in Winston-Salem in the African-American community that has a history that goes back over 800, or over 100 years. Um, Harvey Paul Alexander and others, uh, including uh, uh, Laura Biddy, who are involved with this church early on in purchasing property that we can see in property records in the uh, late 1800s. Uh, a lot of, of my uh, upbringing came out of the church, rising up needs a Baptist church. One of your things was you had to go to church. You know you're saying maybe some mics about it, you're going to church. And not only would you go to church, you had to be a part of something. And uh, I, at that particular time, was a member of the Usher Junior Usher Board, uh, the little junior choir. And when you go to church, you go to church, it was a must, you go to Sunday school prior to uh, church. When I was attending St. Andrew's Church, and we, the pastor at that time was uh, Pastor Phillips, and he was teaching the teenagers. And we had a lot of teenagers to attend the church then. And he said, we go, I'm going to take you all to the mountains. Well, you know, being down here, we, in there, we had never been to no mountains or nothing like that. A lot of us had never even been out of Winston-Salem at that particular time. But that stayed with me all those years, and I was a young girl then, and I never forgot that we went to Pilot Mountain and had lunch up there. To ask what, to tell you what he preached about, that I don't even know. The whole thing is, now I know it, we went to the mountain. Oh, the church was a wonderful place. I remember lots of different things that uh, went on at church. Sunday morning, uh, morning services were always very inspirational. Uh, there were long prayers and wonderful songs uh, that the uh, deacons and other people would sing. Uh, uh, I can remember Mr. Amos Byers who was the neighborhood uh, grave digger. He was one of our deacons, and he used to play long, pray long prayers. And he'd all, he had a family of nine children, and he'd always pray for his children. He'd always say, uh, and I quote as well as I can, Lord bless all of my children and my children's children. You know, I never shall forget that. I joined the church, you know, and I remember one of the things, uh, when I joined the church, we joined the church at St. Andrew, we was young, we was about 18, 17, 16, 17 years old here. And the preacher, we used to go to church, we used to think we were sharp, you know, we go to church every Sunday. And the preacher asked us, said, one day he asked, why don't y'all, uh, why don't you jump, y'all, you join the church? I told him, I said, we're well, rubbing along, he was rubbing along, I said, rubbing along, I said, I'm not a Christian. 
He said, he said, well, Chaka said, why do you come to church every Sunday? I said, he got a whole lot of pretty girls down here. <laughs> <laughs> so we joined the church, and uh, it was about 13 of us joined that day. So when I moved over there with my, over there, we started doing the thing called the Happy Hill Reunion. Now, the Happy Hill Reunion, we find out the kids over there had a lot of low self-esteem. And them with low self-esteem, we had to make them feel good because every time the papers came out, it talked about a killing. It talked about a shooting or these type of things. So in 91, I talked to uh, Rock Bidding, who was a good friend of mine who was born over in Happy Hill, and, and talked to him about trying to put together a reunion to give the community some meaning, plus history because the kids over there didn't know the history about what was going on. In 1994, the Happy Hill Reunion was born. And uh, what we basically did was we had several, about 30 community members that was in the community. We went to Happy Hill Park. And inside of Happy Hill Park, we started getting Pepsi Cola, different vendors and different people to come in and we invited the, uh, the community out. And also we put articles in the paper and try to invite the people back. Anything that you wanted has been in the name. Anything that's needed has come out of Happy Hill. So we've been uh, doing this Happy Hill reunion now. This will be the 11th, 12th year. And the primary reason for the Happy Hill reunion is based on what you're doing now. Trying to keep those memories and trying to keep the history alive. Just as people are proud of Winston, I think we ought to be proud of Salem, and also proud of Happy Hill. Man, it's a hell of a place to stay. I love it. I think it's the God spot of the world. I mean, you know what thing? It's some fine people came out of this garden and died out of Happy, Happy Hill. It's some proud people, and people went on to do well. We just had, uh, I think, a beautiful neighborhood because of the fact that there were beautiful people who lived there. Not only in outside appearance, but people who were beautiful from the inside out. And that made for uh, a community that was fun to live in. And I enjoyed my stay there. We were family. Happy Hill was a family type place. And most of your relatives, we all lived around in the same area. And you know, walking distance, I put it to you that way. You're my aunts and, and the uncles and grandmother and great grandmother and all of us lived in the same area around here. So you 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 was a family. And and the ones that wasn't blood relatives, they became family. Well you would you'd be all one big happy family. And this is what was over here. Love. So we want to get back to what it used to be.